want to make sure everybody is on the same page. Live in Aberdeen, Ryan Martin, the governor is now. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. Taking a quick second. Erica, the National Guard building field hospitals in Michigan and Connecticut, disinfecting nursing homes in Georgia. But here in New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo giving the troops different marching orders to seize ventilators from medical facilities with lower needs and redeploy them to hospitals in crisis. I'm not going to let people die because we didn't uh, redistribute ventilators. The Trump administration has criticized states begging for supplies, accusing them of exaggerating the need. The notion of the federal stockpile was it's supposed to be our stockpile, it's not supposed to be state stockpiles that they then use. But today from the president, a pledge. We uh, will take every action and we'll spare no resource, financial, medical, scientific, we will not spare anything, we'll get it back into shape, the Empire State. In New York today, staggering numbers. More than 100,000 people testing positive for coronavirus. Victoria, a school nurse, is one of them. I am worried about me. I don't want to go out like this. I'm afraid. But I'm afraid that I'm not going to get a chance to see my family again. I'm afraid for what's going to happen to, happen to our country. Tonight, mounting pressure on the governors who have refused to issue stay-at-home orders. One week ago, KIV of Alabama was defiant. We are not Louisiana, we are not New York State, we are not California. And right now is not the time uh, to, to order people to shelter in place. Today, there are 1,300 people testing positive for COVID in Alabama. 21 have died. Ivy now announcing a stay-at-home order effective this Saturday. Missouri tonight issuing its own order. In Florida, where a stay-at-home order only took effect today, cases spiked 20% in just 24 hours. Georgia held out until earlier this week, the governor insisting he only now learned that people without symptoms could spread the disease. This is a game changer for us. But that information has been widely known for weeks. President Trump has resisted pushing holdout states to act, but Dr. Anthony Fauci has been blunt. If you look at what's going on in this country, I just don't understand why we're not doing that. We really should be. Tonight, President Trump with an announcement about masks. The CDC is advising the use of non-medical cloth face covering as an additional voluntary public health measure. So it's voluntary. You don't have to do it. And in Michigan, a warning about the need for social distancing. Bus driver Jason Hardgrove on Facebook saying one of his passengers couldn't stop coughing. For you to get on the bus and stand on the bus and cough several times without covering up your mouth, that lets me know that some folks don't care. Four days after recording that message, Jason developed symptoms himself and died this week. If we just think about those workers across the country and just try to make sure to cough uh, into our arms or cover our faces to try to protect those around us. And Whit Johnson with us again tonight. He's outside that temporary hospital at the Javits Center here in New York. We know that they will be taking coronavirus patients there after that agreement with the president. And, and late today with President Trump, just before we came on announcing the new CDC recommendations when it comes to masks, the Surgeon General already acknowledging that the federal guidance, uh, in his words, has been confusing to the American people on this. David, initially the White House was against face coverings for the general public. Now they are recommending non-medical cloth masks, but President Trump emphasized that it is voluntary and that he himself probably won't be wearing one. David? All right, Whit Johnson leading us off.